Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And today's video is going to be all about double wicking. So I personally love double wicking. I don't have any candles that I sell that is a single wick. So personally, I have a lot more experience with double wicking and I just really wanted to let you guys know some tips, some things that I've learned along the way of double wicking my vessels, as well as as a little bit of a mistake that I've been seeing candle makers making when using the candle science wicking guide that I think is really, really important to talk about in this video. So first things first, the two vessels that I use for my candles, in case you guys are not aware, I use the 13.5 ounce Cali jars from California Candle Supply, and I use the matte black eight ounce tins from California Candle Supply. The jars have a diameter of 3.25 inches, and the tins have a diameter of just about three inches. And if I have learned anything in the past two years of making candles, it is that wicking diameters between this size, these size diameters, three inches to 3.25 inches, even up to three and a half inches, can be the hardest diameter to wick. I don't know what it is. It is very difficult to wick. And if you guys are a part of any of the Facebook groups or anything like that, everybody has a different opinion about double wicking. And I've heard people say to uh, not double wick anything under three and a half inches. I've heard people say don't double wick anything under four inches, which is crazy. I don't know how you can single wick like a 3.75 inch diameter. I would love to see it. I've never tried, but I've never wanted to try because that just seems way too much. I'm sure you can do it, but I've never tried that before. And what I learned from the guys over at California Candle Supply a couple of years ago is they told me that any diameter over three inches should be double wicked. Now, I agree with that, but with caution. So let me tell you guys the caution part of that. Obviously, if you have a three point one five inch diameter, it's gonna be slightly over that three inches, but if you double wick it, it could potentially be too hot. Now, some ways to combat this and what I've learned in the process of double wicking. First of all, with those sizes, so the three inches to that 3.25 inches, maybe a little bit larger, I don't know if you can find a single pour kind of wax to work with a double wicking for those vessels. And what I mean by that is if you were purchasing the virgin coconut wax, soy 10, coconut 83, whatever it is just, that's just a single pour, so you melt it down, you don't blend any other waxes with it and you make a candle out of it. This is just speculation from my experience. I feel like it's going to be too hot if you try to double wick in a diameter that is just slightly over that three inch mark because I feel like it's just going to create too much heat no matter how small you go with the wicks. Again, this is just personal experience and speculation based off of my experience. Um, and the way that I combat that is I do blends. I have a personal wax blend that I do with the wax. I work with Soy 10 as of right now and I do blend it with a little bit of beeswax. And recently I actually switched from the Eco series of wicks. I was using Eco ones for the longest time. And now I've started using the CDN series of wicks and I use the CDN twos. And that to me has, proven to burn a lot better than the Eco One series. And again, all of this is a science experiment. So you're working with the diameter, you're working with the wax, and if you need to raise the melt point to match the diameter, and also you're working with the series of the wicks because all the wicks will burn either a little bit hotter or a little bit cooler. I found that the Eco series burns a little bit hotter than the CDN series. And that's just from, again, personal experience of doing the testing that I've been doing. And I know all of this can seem a little bit complicated because to be honest, it kind of is. It's a matter of, you know, testing and trying to learn and learning the melt point and learning your wax and learning the diameter and doing testing and working with different series of wicks to see how it performs and how it works uh, with your combination of wax and the diameter of jar that you are choosing to work with. 
But one thing that I do want to caution for this video and something that I have seen come up more lately in the Facebook groups that I just have to discuss and let you guys know about is a lot of people are using the Candle Sciences Wick Guide, which is totally fine. Um, I recommend that for you guys to have a starting point for the vessels that you are choosing to work with. However, I wanted to show you guys something. So I'm actually gonna go on my phone right now and I'm going to show you guys what it actually looks like on the website. So this is the Candle Science Wick Guide right here and you're able to choose your wax. So let's go ahead and choose the wax. I'm just gonna do regular 464 and then we're gonna choose the size of the diameter of the jar. So I'm going to pretend that my size is 3.5 inches. So I'm gonna choose the extra large and they are saying to use a CD22 or the runner up is an Eco 16. So you can definitely have that as a starting point with that. But if you go through the testing process and you're just like, this is just not working, it's, it's starting to tunnel or it's just not working or it's creating too much soot, which is what I found with trying to single wick my Cali jars, I wasn't able to with Soy 10. I just, but then again, I really only focused a lot on the CD series and the Eco series. Um, there might be another wick that could work with that and that's why it's good to try out different series of wicks and not do what I did and just work on one or two and focus on those ones. But if you are wanting to double wick that vessel, please, please do not double wick those sizes. Do not do two CD 22s or two Eco 16s, you will have a campfire. I have seen people make posts about the fact that the single wick didn't work, so they're just like, okay, I'll double up on the CD 22s, and it's just way, 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 way too hot, and especially if you're trying to triple wick it, oh my gosh, like don't even try to do that. So what I recommend is if you guys have tried testing your single wick, it's not working, and you're thinking, I wanna try to double wick, and I wanna try to do it in the safe way possible, uh, please just start out with the smallest wick in that series. Whatever series you are working with, look for the smallest wick to start and double wick because if you go through it and you're looking and it's just way too small, then you know all you've got to do is just go up from there um, instead of just trying to start a little bit down the ways or like a midpoint. That's my advice for you guys. I know a lot of times people would look at that and be like, oh, you could try two CD8s or two CD10s. To me, I feel like that would still be way too hot. Try to go down the list as the smallest and then go up from there. Also something real fast I wanted to comment on before I end today's video is make sure that when you are placing the wicks to double wick them, that they are about an inch apart no matter what the diameter is. I've seen a lot of people place the wicks too far apart and they're too close to the edges of the glass. So just make sure that you are placing them about an inch apart. And I actually got these custom wick holders made in order to do that every time and I will have it linked down in the description box below. But that is all for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.